J'ai l'honneur de vous accueillir ici à Genève à l'occasion de l'ouverture de la deuxième session du Conseil intergouvernemental des services climatologiques. Il y a exactement cinq ans, nous nous réunissions dans cette même salle pour la troisième conférence mondiale sur le, sur le climat, celle qui a donné naissance au, au GFCS. En cinq ans, nous sommes passés de la phase préliminaire à une phase de mise en œuvre. Nous sommes déjà complètement dans la phase de mise en œuvre et les ambitions du cadre global ne sont certainement pas le plus petit commun dénominateur. We strongly feel that GFCS can add value to FAO's major climate services related activities. The expensiveness of not investing in climate services should be a key message. A dollar invested in disaster risk reduction can save two to ten dollars in disaster response and recovery costs. We need to work across disciplines, across UN agencies and organizations, across borders and across economic and social layers. For us, partnership is really important and it's, uh, I think, is a key word in, the, in this initiative to bring all the institutions together and to build, uh, you know, synergies. Partnership is fundamental to the implementation, the design and implementation of the Global Framework for Climate Services. The Partnership Advisory Committee gathers all those agencies that are trying to find the best practices, the best knowledge and the best networks that we have today in our system to bring about climate services. This conference is uh, important in many respects uh, because it brings the uh, various uh, stakeholders such as scientists, uh, national med services, uh, donors and uh, civil society organizations to discuss common issues related to climate information. In our country, we depend on the rainfall because 70% of the population are farmers. So in the Metrological Authority, we provide services for these farmers. I'm wishing to see more workshops, more scientific seminars in terms of climate change science and climate prediction models of Arabia. We have countries which are least developed and small island developing states. And so from our point of view, very important underpinning to this is to enable those, uh, those organizations and national meteorological and hydrological services in a way so that they can furnish that information that's necessary to make the right decisions. Well, one of the areas that is also a challenge is around observation uh, networks that are required to collect the data. And this will assist us to really highlight in how this information should be processed to ensure that we are responding to what the society uh, needs. And what we actually are already doing is, for example, providing data to African countries uh, free of charge. And I think that's very well achieved by all these countries because they can improve weather forecasts with that. They can also use that for early warning purposes already. And that's, that's a first step, but there could be more that, that is to be done in, in the future. We got a very clear recommendation from the conference. Um, um, uh, the conference uh, 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 considered the work plan of uh, uh, the Global Framework for Climate Services and made very specific recommendations with a view to its finalization so that uh, we can uh, step up the level of implementation we've um, been able to, to uh, uh, put in place for the past uh, two years. And the document is <laughs> It um, is a moment where people on the one side took stock in terms of what is it that we are doing to help uh, the community to adapt to climate variability, to adapt to, to climate change, to use uh, information to anticipate negative impact of um, uh, extreme events and thereby uh, maximize the benefits of accessing climate information.